Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to a very special online event today. It's called Discover the Potent Healing Power of Natural Hygienics. Align with nature to clear toxicities, reset your biorhythms, and experience vibrant health. My name is Stephen Dynam. I'm the founder and president of the Shift Network, and I'm really excited to be with you here because I'm going to be inspired, as I know you are, by a perspective on how to align our bodies in a way that is organic and natural and it results in vibrant health and a deeper spiritual connection. We're going to get to do so with someone who's been a remarkable pioneer in this uh, space. His name is Brian Siddhartha Ingle. He is the co-founder of Living Somatics. He's a naturopath and registered doctor of osteopathy. And he's also made his life something of a living laboratory for experimenting in practices of radiant health. And we're going to learn some really cool insights and practices today. And if you are inspired to go further, we have a brand new program coming with him. It's going to be 12 weeks on Align with Nature's Laws for Deep Healing and Radical Well-Being. So we'll share a little bit more about that towards the end of the hour. So Brian, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Stephen. A pleasure to be here once more with you. Thank you for having me. Well, I want to begin our journey since I've, I actually wasn't even privy to a lot of your backstory that is feeding into the, this uh, presentation today. I'd love for you to share a little bit about your own upbringing and how that led into a deep practice of natural hygienics. And then we'll get into what that actually means and how it can benefit our lives. Yes, uh, born in a Dublin city in a, in a village called Sandy Mount in Dublin City, right by the sea, which is quite a significant impact on me as a person in my life. We lived, um, we, I, had, I have seven brothers and sisters, and uh, we grew up in this little village in Sandy Mount, right by the sea. And during that time, it was much more in line with nature, even though it was an urban setting. We didn't have any central heatings. When it, winter came along, we had one fireplace where we got warm in the, in, the, in the nighttime, but when we went to bed, it was cold at night. We only ate what was in season. When the uh, summer was on, we spent our whole da time down by the beach um, harvesting cockles and mussels and catching little flat fish with our little children's feet and bringing it home to eat. So we were very much in line with nature's laws unwittingly in the way that perhaps we all were not too long ago it's just in recent times we've come more into sort of trying to find too much comfort and not testing our edge with the elements so i felt very privileged to grow up in that very um, natural and simple way in line with the seasons in line with seasonal foods and very much in line with natural law and what came out of that was a very strong system a strong nervous system a strong physically a good mental health in fact in relation to non-native electromagnetic fields i didn't have my first computer till i was 40 and at college everything was paper and pen and lectures and if you weren't there for the lecture you missed it and that was it so very sort of natural simple life in the way that perhaps things should have thing should have been before things got a little bit more complicated. <laughs> I'd love for you to share a little bit about what you've discovered then in terms of uh, health practices to align with a more natural rhythm cycle. Yes, good question. Well, you know, um, in, in that piece that you read about my life, I had some challenges also as a, a child my my father had um, ill health he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and um, in and out of mental hospital so i was subjected to that at a young age so it, it really made me go down this quest as to what is health how do we find health and in fact um the reason the inspiration that happened for me around bringing this course together was one of my close relatives ended up getting um diagnosed with, with, with cancer, and very quickly it was, it was clear that it was stage four. And in the family WhatsApp, she wrote, so why wouldn't I get uh, cancer? One in uh, three people in Ireland get cancer in their lifetime. And that was uh, really struck me as to why would one get cancer? And why would one not get cancer? And why, with my routine and my lifestyle, have I really never been sick except for a couple of acute 
infections relation to living in South Asia. And I started to really break down what I do in my routine that enables me to have this robust health and this happy disposition and this ease in my system. So I, I looked at that and I looked at the quantum biology behind it. I looked at the most important thing in relation to health. And this is one of the premises of natural hygienists, uh, natural hygienists and naturopaths and osteopaths is we, we don't look for disease. We look for the obstacles of disease and then come into this place of health that is always with us. So there's one thing I'd like to share with you, and that is called the riddle of the Sphinx. You might have heard of this riddle. What has four legs in the morning, two at noon, and three in the evening? And the answer to that riddle, of course, is man and womankind, who crawls in four legs, uh, four, four um, limbs as a baby, then walks in two legs as, as in the growing up, and then finally ends up with a cane. And there seems to be this downward spiral in our health and in our well-being. And I have the premises that that does not have to be the case, as long as we can remove the obstacles to the health and find the obstacles to the health and actually embody what health is. And in osteopathic medicine, we have a formula for self-healing, which is related to embodiment. And a lot of the previous courses that I've done has been around embodiment, as you know, which been highly successful. And in relation to that, the health and how embodiment and the health and the epigenetic factors, which I'll go into in a moment, influence and move towards disease so that self-healing can take place. You see, in, in osteopathic medicine, as I said, we don't focus on disease as such. We focus on how do we remove the obstacles to disease to find the health, to come back to this vitality and this vibrancy. And just to uh, explain to you in this formula what embodiment is, embodiment from my perspective, just to outline it, because we hear this word a lot, but it's just a combination of proprioception, how we use ourselves, interoception, how we feel ourselves from the inside, and extraoception, this, this um, inner felt sense of um, who we are and also related to our vestibular system. And with that, our intuition starts to come in, where we sort of know what's the right thing to somehow move next in our lives or or to speak. We're in touch with the, the bigger picture. Unless we're embodied, we can't really get in touch with our intuition. So that's part of the, um, the, the formula for self-healing, which is this embodiment component. Now, Andrew Taylor is still the founder of osteopathy. He said, to find health should be the objective of the, of the doctor, and anybody should find disease. And I know I keep coming back to this. It's such an important point is what is health? Where is health? And health is um, there even in the presence of disease. And it is palpable and it is accessible. And the same generative forces that were at work in developing us as an embryo, somehow the function was laid down in these, in these fluid fields. And from that function came our structure. And this organizing potential, those same uh, generative for forces at work developing us are the same regenerative forces that heal us now. So it's there within us. If we can just remove the obstacles to the health and find the health and let the health to, um, come forth and do what it does, which of course is self-healing. Now, there's one very important definition of uh, what osteopathy is by Andrew Taylor Still, and we really should have a look at this to really understand how he was such a, a radical. You see, he, he had children who died of um, meningitis, and the, he was a, an allopathic physician himself, 
but somehow he knew it wasn't working. Something was not right in his world back then. And even still today, we have a, a, a big epidemic of chronic diseases that are happening right now. I and mean, we're very good at, at dealing with acute diseases and infectious diseases and um, trauma. But when it comes to these chronic diseases like um, cancers, like um, diabetes, like um, uh, Alzheimer's and, and so forth, it seems to be a big endemic in these, in these chronic diseases. So the definition that uh, Andrew, Taylor still, uh, Andrew Taylor still said was, osteopathy is the science of the structure and function of the human mechanism by which nature may recover from disease, by which nature may recover from disease. Now, we, we, must, we must really ask ourselves the question, what did he mean by nature? And, and we, we'll get into that. But remember that I, I used to play rugby when I was um, a boy, and I'm, actually it's the, the one thing that still remains with me from my, my youth as, as growing up in Ireland, and actually we're doing very well in the rugby in Ireland. So when you think about a, a ruck and the ball, there's a, there's a whole lot of rugby players on top of this ball, and you can think about the ball being the health. And these, the scrummage and all these players, if we could just remove the obstacles from the health, then we will come to the ball and we'll find the health. And it is available for everybody. In fact, Hippocrates, the founder of our modern day medicine, all those uh, hundreds of years ago said, again, nature cures, not the physician. Nobody cures you. Back to this word, nature again, nature cures. And I have come to realize in my inquiry into looking at my routine that a lot of it is to do with our circadian rhythms and, in fact, quantum biology. And I would like to quote the founder of quantum theory, Max Planck, when he says, science cannot solve the ultimate mystery of nature. And that is because in the analysis, we ourselves are part of that nature and therefore part of the mystery that we are trying to solve. So we've got a hint there. We are animals. Unfortunately, we have become domesticated zoo animals confined within four walls with glass, with heating and so forth. When in fact, we were very much designed until the lights went on 120 years ago in Chicago and that date when Edison gave us electricity, which has its purpose, of course, we did not have artificial light. We did not have nightlife. We had candles, we had the earth, and we got up when the sun came up and we went to bed pretty much when the sun went down. And I realized that the, the, the missing piece here in the epigenetic story in relation to nature is that in fact, we are, we have as human beings developed in relation to natural law in relation to nature, in relation to these so, so important circadian rhythms. And if we come out of line with our nature, with the laws of nature, we are frankly going to get bitten in the ass and we're going to end up with some chronic disease. And when you think about what happened recently in the pandemic, that happened um, there around the world, and specifically in the United States, where 4% of the population take up, uh, uh, belong to our Americans, but 16% of the people who died during that pan pandemic were Americans. And you have to ask yourself the question, why? And I, as you know, used to live in the States, and I saw this way back then, that there was going to be some big, big problem. When I used to go into a gas station in the morning, everybody was buying two liters of soda, Coca-Cola, or something like this. And I'm sorry to say, but everybody was overweight. I was in the Midwest where I was. So the, the, the thing that happened in the United States, it wasn't COVID that got them. It was every one of those people had 3.5 chronic diseases going on. They had hypertension, 
He had obesity, he had some other chronic disease, and then they got COVID and they were hanging off the edge of a cliff and somehow COVID went along and boom, and that was the end of it. So we are living in a time where chronic disease has become this pandemic. And when something like COVID comes along, that really pushes us over the edge. Now, let's talk a moment about natural hygienics, which is in fact very much in line with the principles of osteopathy. And the beautiful thing about natural hygienics um, compared to other systems is that we believe that we have our own innate pharmacopoeia within inside ourselves to get to the help for the self-healing to take place if we get in line with natural law. Natural hygienics is neither a practice of medicine, it's, nor is it a system of therapeutics. It offers no cures, does not pretend to cure, and strives to dispel the notion of cure. It emphasizes and adheres to its principle based on the law of nature, which permits the body to heal itself. And here we are back to, the, back to it. How does the body heal itself? How do we come into the health? How can we activate this endogenous uh, pharmaceutical canopy that we have within us to enable to come into robust health? And which of course means mind and body in, in terms of deep sense of fulfillment, deep sense of purpose, deep sense of well-being, just by aligning ourselves with natural law, natural law in the way that we grew and developed as humans for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And the, the theories of natural, um, of, um, natural hygiene is, again, the human body has the power to heal itself. It has the primary cause of disease are stress, toxemia, overworking, overeating, unhealthy um, um, substances, and environmental factors. And then in fact that germs, bacteria, and viruses are not the primary cause of disease. And also in um, natural hygienics and in naturopathy as well, we do actually use the power of fasting and how that can help us in all sorts of ways. And I, not that I'll be going into that in this course, but it's something that as a naturopath we, we worked with and that's still something that I do and I value that very much. And it is actually a cornerstone of natural hygienics, and there's a lot of science to back that up. You notice that I haven't spoken about nutrition. I haven't spoken about exercise in this equation because I really do believe that nutrition and exercise are way down the list in terms of priority. And you know what? Everybody knows that they shouldn't be eating junk food. Everybody knows they shouldn't be eating processed foods. And everybody knows that they should be exercising. But we all know all that, but everybody's still eating junk foods and a lot of people aren't exercising. And the people who are eating well and exercising often find themselves in some sort of chronic disease too. And what I want to outline here is the epigenetic factors in relation to this equation of self-healing. And believe it or not, it is a story of light. It is a story of natural light. And it is a story of getting out of unnatural light because the unnatural light and the non-native electromagnetic fields are affecting us in a way that is part of the whole story in relation to chronic disease. In fact, when you are in front of a computer at night and that blue light is coming into you, it has the effect of you creating cortisol, glucose. It's like eating a cheesecake except you're not getting the satisfaction of eating a cheesecake. So all these guys who set up natural hygienics, who osteopathy, Hippocrates, and so forth, they weren't aware of artificial light, non-native um, electromagnetic fields, et cetera. And this is a big, big factor, especially in relation to the youth and the growing youth and the growing, the developing nervous system. And I, I have to say that I, have, uh, I am not very optimistic in terms of the future unless this is really addressed very, very uh, quickly because it's an urgent matter to look at. So the epigenetic factors is a story of light, natural light, and specifically, and the most important thing 
is setting your circadian rhythms by watching the sunrise. And even if you can't see the sunrise, to be up and outside when the morning light comes. That is essential. That is the bottom line of this whole thing. And there's a lot of other things on top of that. This coming into the light in the morning sets us up for sleep because it's the light that hits our eyes that through this pathways goes into our uh, pineal gland that we produce melatonin so that when the darkness comes, then we the melatonin comes out and we start to get sleep. And of course, the, the, it's back into the circadian rhythms and have that right. So it's a story of light. It's a story of dark. It's a story of magnetism. And it's a story of water. And when we really look into it, it is a quantum biology story. And it is very much related to the mitochondria in our cells. And there's trillions of mitochondria in our cells. And what does mitochondria do? It makes ATPase. And it makes a special type of water which is called easy water, which I'm really not going to get into now, but water is a big part of the story. Magnetism, the, the, the ATP is, is a magnetic field, and the light and how that affects the mitochondria is a massive story here in the whole, um, in the whole uh, not theory, but in, in the whole health story and the whole self-healing story. So we have these, this material, our physicality, our biochemistry, but we have all this invisible, unmanifest factors going on. Even when it comes to light, we have the visible spectrum of light, and we've got all these other sides of it that are affecting us too. So there's a whole unmanifest quantum part that is really affecting us. And on, on the course that I'm going to be teaching, I'm going to get very much into this so that we'll have the understanding as to why we need to do these things so that we understand why and we start implementing it piece by piece, we somehow um, come, start getting a taste of what, it like, what it's like to come back to health. And I am really at the point now where I'm convinced where optimal health is not this sort of like chance thing or this, how do we get it? It is a choice. It is a choice that we make. And it's not this thing that is difficult, actually. Because once one starts walking on this path and starts taking these recommendations, starting realizing that we are nature itself, and for us to come into health, we have to get in line with natural laws so that we can remove the obstacles to health, so the potency and the vitality of the health can start infuse and come through us and we rest in that and we we age with health and it doesn't have to be this thing where we go downhill so the material and the non-material field coexist simultaneously and you are and are united in a dynamic state of connective oneness when you look and um, you're you're there in the united states Stephen. When you think about what was happening in the United States with the native indigenous people there maybe 500 years ago and what they were up to and how they were, they were in totally in line with the seasons. They were in, in line with the, the light and the dark. And they were supermen in terms of what they could do in terms of their health and what they could achieve. The best of the best here today will not even compete with what those guys were doing. They were in touch with nature and they were in touch with natural law and they were in touch with their own nature and they lived outside and it was dark. They slept and when the winter came along, they slept for longer and they moved to certain points to, in, in relation to food and they, they hunted for the animals and they ate what was locally there. I mean, they weren't eating pineapples. They were eating what was there in season for them. And I'd like to just finish this talk. We talked about this, the, the, the sphinx and the riddle of the sphinx. Do you know what the interesting thing about that is? Because the, the sphinx asks this question. How is it? What is it? We're four legs and then we're two and then we're three and we sort of go downhill. But the sphinx is giving us the remedy to this problem. 
And what is the Sphinx doing? The Sphinx has got its hands and its feet on the ground, and it's facing east, the rising sun. It asks the question, but it gives us the answer to the riddle as how to prevent us going downhill. This massive, massive monument that was made 5,000 years ago ahead of a human and animals and humans. We need to be on the ground to receive the earthing magnetic energy of the earth, which has so many benefits. And we need to see the sun rise in the east. Hmm. And that is the message of the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> well, you bring up so many intriguing and provocative points that make a lot of sense in terms of aligning with these natural biorhythms. And I, I feel like it'd be useful to for us to get a glimpse collectively into the schedule and the sort of the morning routine and some of the things that you've evolved personally that reflect and empower this, uh, this deeper shift that you're illuminating. Absolutely, absolutely. So in fact, the, the embodied um, lesson that I'm going to take you through will be sort of a mini sort of dive into a sort of a daily routine um, sort of embodying that on a sort of a, on a quantum level. But I'll speak about it now, and then we'll, we'll lead you through this practice. So, of course, the, the non-negotiable part of this whole thing is get out when the sun rises. So before, when I wake up, you know, when, when we wake up, when anyone wakes up, there's something happens within our system. So there's some hormones that are taking place so that, that the body starts to arouse and wake up and, oh, I am awake. I am awake. And with that, the, the natural thing to do is to pandiculate, which is this wake up stretch that children often do and animals do, but adults seem to have forgotten. So yeah, I, I, I bring that on when I wake up. So, oh, I am awake. I do this pandiculation stretch. I, I bring myself to the breath and I just be aware that I'm alive, that I'm breathing. I slow down the breath a little bit. I go to the bathroom and the first thing I do is I go into this ice bath. And that is one of the best things you can do for like really waking you up. And the, the physiological benefits of that are, are extraordinary. And it's really been well laid out now, but it is extremely good for mental health. And if you're feeling a little bit groggy and like, oh, waking up, you get into that and you're like, zing. And there's all these happy hormones take place. And you actually start to uh, emit light from the mitochondria from inside. Cold is very, very, very good. So then I, um, I go to my roof or I go to the beach to watch the sun or I start my, my embodied yoga practice and my somatic practice and I let the light come on my body. And I'm by the beach. I tend to do that practice where the water meets the sand because that's the most important place where we can get a free, electron, free electrons. And it's all about harvesting free electrons it really is it's the, the energy that we get from our food is only like uh, maybe uh, not even half the story the energy that we can get is from light and is from the earth and you could take you should, one should take advantage of that and get that there is such things as a free lunch it's called free electrons and it's from the earth and it's from the sun so that morning light is crucial and that morning light on our skin as well in our uh, on our eyes is also crucial and so you know i i do all that and then I mosey towards um, Sri Aurobindo's ashram, which is an ashram here, which is a very quiet place. There's a big, big tree there, or uh, it's, it's shading the samadhi of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. And, and I put my hand on the tree and I feel the roots. And again, I'm harvesting electrons because you, know, you don't actually have to be on the earth to harvest electrons. You could have your hand on a plant, even an indoor plant, and you'll still get that effect. And also I give gratitude to that tree for its shade that's given. And I give gratitude to the Swiss tree surgeon who's looked after that. So gratitude is a big part of my daily routine as well, when, when I can bring it on and in small and in big ways. Then I sit in that, in that ashram and I, I read and I, I meditate and I focus on my breath. And, you know, that's, so I got up around five, by 30 and by all that's over by maybe eight in the morning. And then I get home and I eat breakfast and I, I start my day. So that's, I'm not, not every day, but it's sort of, sort of like that. It's sometimes I don't go to the ashram. Sometimes I'm on my roof doing the yoga. Sometimes I'm at the beach. But the key thing is get that morning light in your eyes when the sun is rising. And I'm fortunate enough 
that I'm right to the east and I'm two blocks away from the sea and the sun is always shining at this time of year every day and it rises and it's beautiful and I appreciate the sun as a divine living God because the sun has given us everything without sun there is nothing and we take it for granted so I think the least we can do is, is give gratitude and homage to the sun and the celestial being within the sun and what the sun represents in terms of confidence, in terms of strength, in terms of vitality, in terms of health, in terms of metabolism. These qualities of Surya, of the sun, to, to give gratitude and thanks and build a relationship with this celestial being will enable you to embody these qualities. So that's an important piece of it too, that the spiritual element of this, having this relationship with this celestial body, I'm not just thinking, cold, uh, you know, electrons and proton, quanta, quanta, uh, photons and harvesting energy. It's like, no, hold on a second. This sun has risen every day for millions of years, giving the light. And it's because of the sun that we have developed into who we are. So to give gratitude to that. <laughs> Beautiful. I love the multi dimensions, multiple dimensions you're looking at from the bio photons to the sort of reverence of the sun as a sort of a representative of creator. And so I would love for, um, let's go on this embodied journey that you want to take us on to really bring the, some of the principles and the practice into our own bodies. Let's, let's do that. So I'm not going to demonstrate it and I'm not going to have a model doing this. So I want you to just have full confidence on what you're doing is fine. What you're doing is correct. And you're not making a mistake here with anything that you're doing. And just, just have confidence in that. So for the viewers who are watching right now, just, just come to lie down. Come to lie down in a, in a comfortable place. You, you don't have to see me. You just have to hear me. So take a moment to get yourself comfortable. Get yourself and if you're not comfortable lying down, there's no reason why you can't do the sitting up as well. So come to lie on your back. Get a sense of just the whole of you in relation to the floor or to the bed that you're lying on. And I, I want you to imagine that you're in your own bed and you've come to the end of your sleep so your eyes are closed and there's something happening inside to stir you and you become conscious of yourself you're starting to wake up and you get a sense that you're awake you're conscious you're alive and with that, how do you know you're alive? Just notice your breath. How does the breath move you? And just let it be a very easy, not a deep breath, just a, a shallow breath where just the tummy is rising and falling. And you're not using your rib, rib cage to breathe. It's just it's a gentle, shallow breath. I'm awake. I'm breathing, I'm alive. And just get a sense of how now you're going to start this movement of moving to prepare yourself to rise, this pendiculation that I was talking about. So think, focus on your right shoulder and just bring it backwards towards your left hip behind you and then release it and then focus on your left shoulder blade and your left shoulder and bring that back towards your right hip and just alternate that where you get a sense of oh i'm just going to move a little bit my shoulder backwards diagonally one way and then the other way and then just bring both shoulders back and maybe bend your elbows as if you're doing this Wake up, stretch, and any way that you feel where you contract. And then you release out and lengthen. And maybe you can 
start yawning into this wake up stretch. I do that a couple of times. <clears throat> yes. Get a sense now that the, the whole of you is starting to come more alive and wake up. Come back to your breath. Now, I would invite you to imagine that you're going to find a place that you know in your locality where there is nature and where you know the sun, the sunlight comes or rises. So I'm inviting you to, in your imagination, to move to that place, however you would get there, even if that means getting into your car or walking. So you're, you're getting into your car and you're, or you're walking to that place. And quickly, this is happening in your imagination. And you've found this part in nature where the sun is just about to rise. And you're sitting uh, or standing on the earth and you're getting a sense of the electromagnetic field as it comes through your feet. And if you're like a sphinx, you can have your feet and your hands on the earth and you can take in the earth's free electrons in this nature. And as you take this in, in your mind's eye, you see the sun as it starts to rise. And the light is taken in by your eyes. And this goes down to your very important inner clock to set your biorhythms for the day. And it informs the pineal gland to start making melatonin so that when the dark comes, you will sleep. So just be a little bit actively involved in that process of taking in the sun's morning light through your eyes. And maybe you haven't got your shirt on and you're feeling the morning, the infrared light coming onto your skin, charging your system, setting your cellular rhythms for melatonin to be made within your mitochondria, which will clean up your mitochondria for better function. Feel yourself charged by the earth, charged by the morning sun and setting your biorhythms. And inwardly, as you look at the sun, as I described earlier, can you somehow just bow down with reverence and gratitude for this celestial being who has given you life and light and food, because everything that you eat is in relation to the light of the sun and photosynthesis. Some appreciation for the celestial body who has given everything to you and never asked for anything in return. Get a sense of what it's like to be in communion with reverence with this celestial being and with the earth underneath you and within all of this this osteopathic mantra ask yourself the question at the end of the outbreath where is the help And just let the system, your system, your living body answer that question, whatever that is. And in your awareness, include the fields, the bioelectric field that very much surrounds your three-dimensional body, your living body. And let that be fortified by the energies of the earth by the sunlight, and by the question at the end of the outbreath, where is the hell? And let that 
continue with you, the health showing itself, and the health moving towards disease in this process of self-healing. And slowly finish this journey. Find your way to your side. Find your way back to sitting and notice that there's been a deeper ease within you, somehow more accessible to your own nature in relation to nature outside. Hmm. Beautiful, Brian. Well, you really are able to transmit this deeper way of being and uh, a real sense of realignment with your own natural rhythms and planetary rhythms and activating light as a as a reset and a, a way to gather in energy into our system. And um, it's really beautiful. Are there other dimensions of this natural hygienics formula for health that you want to also set out here as sort of foundational principles before we um, talk a little bit about how people can make a, a, a deeper commitment with uh, the program you're offering? You, you know, what, what's coming to me is that I just really want to emphasize that you have the potential of living a very optimal, healthy life and aging with health if you decide to make certain simple choices. It is very much accessible for you. And the course that I am going to deliver is the way into this. And this is what's really moving for me because we have spent so much resources on supplements, on medications, on diets, on exercise, and it's, 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 it's maybe important, but there's something so much more fundamental that's much more important, that when we get in line with that, when we get in line with our own nature, and we get in line with nature's laws, we can access this health, this optimal health, and live a, 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 a life that's meaningful to ourselves and others, a sense of purpose, a sense of joy, a sense of vitality. That is accessible to each and every person if we make that choice. Hmm. And I would like to show you how to make that choice. Hmm. Well, I think that's a beautiful way to uh, to begin our exploration of this program. And so let's talk about it. So the program is called Align with Nature's Laws for Deep Healing and Radical Well-Being, 12 Embodied Practices to Cleanse and Reset Your Biorhythms for Vibrant Health. You can find it laid out in detail at naturalhygienicscourse.com. Hygienics, hygienics is H-Y-G-I-E-N-I-C-S, naturalhygienicscourse.com. It's actually a 12-week program, and that allows us to really set deeper foundations and do this in a very systematic way and really activate a new pattern of possibility in your life. So, Brian, I first maybe share a bit about the high-level intentions for the 12-week the arc you'll be taking people through, and then I'll read out the module title so you can give us a preview of what's coming in each. The high-level intentions and the arc is really to, as I said before, to remove the obstacles to health so that you can find the health and let the health, what it knows how to do, which is move to dis-ease so self-healing can take place. That's the big picture. So module one is called Begin to Develop a Relationship with the Sun to Gain Energy, Improve Immunity, and Lower Cholesterol. Uh, yes, and any information that you've been given about the sun not being good for you has is just wrong. <laughs> All the science says that the sun is good for you, but there's a way of going about that that is good for you. It's not like you go into the midday sun and you put on a lot of sunscreen. That's not it. There's a way of building up a sun callus so you can do that in a way that's meaningful and healthy. So we'll, we'll teach you about the science behind that, how to build this sun callus 
and how to build a relationship with the sun and how to get in some Vedic mantras around the sun too. So but it's, it, light is the beginning point. Mm. Module two, discover how light and dark support healthy circadian rhythms, melatonin production in the autonomic nervous system. Melatonin is so, so vitally important, and it is not just in relation to our sleep. It is in relation to how we clean up our mitochondria. To understand how light and dark and melatonin, melatonin work in relation to the mitochondria is vitally, well, actually, it's not important to understand it, but the more that you understand it, the more that you're more likely to implement these laws because you get it. As one of my mentors, Dr. Jack Carew says, a hippopotamus and a lion doesn't know anything about quantum biology, but they're in the earth, they're in the sun, and when it gets too hot, they're in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> Module three, enhance and develop your bioelectric shield to heal faster and improve cognitive function. You know, we, we touched a little bit on this in terms of these, this field and how we can we have a bioelectric field, we have a magnetic bioelectric field, which goes very much out into the distance. The more vital that is, the more strong that is, the more our health will be robust and the more that we will be settled and confident within ourselves and more able to combat anything that comes from the outside. So building this force field, if you will, is a, is a big um, intention in this course. And that, of course, is in relation to magnetism and the earth. Module four, strengthen the connection between light, melatonin, and mitochondria to fend off chronic disease and improve cardiovascular function. Why do we eat? Why do we breathe? We do that so that the mitochondria can produce ATPAs. It is all about electrons and photons. So to understand mitochondrial health and to enable that to function in a way that's tight so that we do not lose energy, but we make energy. We have those resources. We need energy for everything. That's why we want to be healthy, because we have energy. If we don't have energy, we can't do anything. So it's all down to mitochondrial function. And we'll go into the mechanism where mitochondrial came from and how it is such a genius bacteria living within our cells. And we will bow down in deep reverence to its function, because without it, we are not alive. <laughs> Module five, process electromagnetic energy using exclusion zone water for complete hydration and to improve blood flow. Water is a big part of the story and structured water is a very, very import important part of the story. And one of the things that I'm gonna get into in this module is deuterium and this heavy water, which is a big part of the chronic disease equation in relation to things like cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, diabetes, and so forth. If we can have deuterium in the right places and have much more structured water and have our mitochondria functioning in the right way, that is the ticket. I have looked at cases where there's been on this deuterium depletion, uh, just drinking deuterium depleted water and the cancer has completely gone away, just this one thing. So I want to get into what structured water is, what uh, deuterium is, and how we can have strategies to reduce deuterium and um, have more mitochondrial function in the right way. Because one of the byproducts of mitochondrial function is this very important structured water. Hmm. That sounds truly fascinating just by itself. So module six, then synchronize your system with the phases of the moon to connect with its feminine qualities. You know, in the quantum biology space and in the healing space, the moon is something not very much, um, it's, there's not much attention on it, but I, actually I think it's a very important part of the story. And I, I have a feeling that the reason why it hasn't been given such um, attention is because it is the feminine. And we've been living in a patriarchy for such a long time. And I want to bring the light of the moon and the qualities of the moon back into this. And in fact, when I'll be doing this module, the moon, as you probably know, I'm into Vedic astrology, the moon is in this very important nakshatra called Rohini nakshatra. And we'll go into the qualities of Rohini nakshatra and we'll embody these qualities. And we'll, import, we'll talk about and get in tune with the moon and, and the different phases of the moon and how that affects our biology and our mind state, because the moon represents emotions and mind. 
Module seven, ignite your inner fire with the practice of cold hydrotherapy for cellular health and to release the infrared light that's stored in fat. And that's exactly what it does. It releases infrared light. It releases energy. Cold hydrotherapy, which is a good old naturopathic uh, thing that we studied in college, it's now called cold thermogenesis. And we've got the Iceman doing these things. But these, the cold hydrotherapy has been around for a very long time. And we're just going to teach you simple ways of how to bring it into your life. It doesn't mean you have to be like me and get into a nice bath first in the morning, but some of us do. But some of us shouldn't actually, because those who are what we call it, a coupled haplotype, which is to do with our mitochondria and how the, the one of us, those in the Northern hemisphere, we are able to produce heat from the cold and that's a good thing. But those who have always lived by the equator, they haven't got that function as much. So they would have a different way of going about it. So I want to go into the, the, the function of this um, uncoupled haplotype in relation to the DNA around mitochondria and the function of cold in relation to that and how that helps us. And by the way, each module will have an embodied meditation or movement practice to really um, hone down what we've been talking about. Module eight, reset functional breathing to increase blood oxygen and your body's innate healing ability. You know, functional breathing is um, a really important aspect of all of this. And if we can oxygenate, because again, remember, what is it all about? It's all about mitochondria. What does mitochondria need? It needs oxygen and it needs macronutrients to pass to, for the Krebs cycle and then go into this electron transfer chain. So we make ATPAs. So the more oxygenated we are, the more our mitochondria is going to function in a better way. And functional breathing is very, very simple. It's like nothing is going on. I tried to touch on it a little bit in this embodied meditation that we did. So I want to go into a deeper way of how we can get into what's called the Bohr effect. So we really do ox bring oxygen to our distal parts of our body so that it really um, gives that onto our mitochondria so we produce more ATPase. Functional breathing, very important part, and we'll cover that in modules eight. So many different dimensions that really, um, I, I'm sure there's just some amazing distinctions and practices in each of these. So module nine, keep your bones and tissues growing strong with bioelectric energy. You know what? When we were in osteopathic school, they, and you probably know this too, and everybody knows that they, 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 we have Wolf's Law, which basically means you need sort of like stress on the bones for the bones to regenerate. You probably have heard of that, and most people have. So my sister rang me up the other day and said, Brian, I've got osteopenia. It's going to go osteoporosis. I exercise all my life. I'm not overweight. I have a great diet. And I was like, yeah. Well, I said, I said Rachel, this, you know what you got to do? You got to get a ticket to the equator and take off your shoes and be there for a few months. He said, well, I'm not going to do that. I said, well, then your second option is to get into swimming in the Irish Sea, in the cold Irish Sea. And the point I'm trying to make here is that bone grows because of a direct electric current. We need to get back into that. And if we have not got our feet on the earth, and if we've not got our sun, our light of the sun on our bodies, it doesn't matter if you're doing exercise, and it doesn't matter if your nutrition is good. You're, you will end up with weak bones. And I want to show you a formula of how you can have strength in your bones by looking at the body electric and Robert O. Becker's work and the guy in the 60s who figured this out. Hmm. Module 10, harness energy from light magnetism in the earth to enhance your diet and increase the health within your system. You know, notice that I haven't spoken about nutrition and diet at all in this thing. And the only thing that I've really said is eat what's local and what's in season, because the whole diet thing is just a minefield. It, it, it just, it's not a useful place to go. And it's not, as I said, the most important thing. It's way down the list. And the point I'm trying to make here is that the earth and the sun gives us food. You know what I was teaching? Actually, I want to backtrack there a little bit. Do you know what happened to me um, recently when I was cognizing this whole thing? I taught a course here in residence and I had these people and I was this, this one aspect of um, osteopathy in terms of hands-on and not doing and listening to the system and finding the health. It's called you know, cranial osteopathy or biogenomic osteopathy. And I always had this problem of how do I teach this? How do I teach this? And I got the answer. Do you know what I did with these students? I had them all in the water, watching the sunrise, getting to bed at nine o'clock. 
And all of a sudden, their own systems started to come in line with nature. And their own nature started to come through. As one, as Jack Cruz says, if you're no good for yourself, then what good are you for anybody else? So they became very, very good for themselves. They started to harness energy from the sun. They started getting their bioelectric field in order. They started feeling the health in their own system. And lo and behold, this hands-on osteopathic deep listening to the health started to reveal itself in a very natural way. And then I got it, like, this is it. To find the health in someone else, you need to find the health in your health, in yourself first. It's pretty obvious, but in the way to do that is to get in line with natural law. Hmm. That's module 10. <laughs> module 11, soften your pineal gland to expand your intuition and enter a synch synchronistic flow state. Yes, synchronistic flow state. There's no way you're going to get into your intuition and a synchronistic flow state and listen to the signs and be in this flow state unless you have figured out you are nature and how to get in line with natural law. When all the other previous modules has got to the point where you're in what they call in the West, the green room, <laughs> you're in the flow state. You know, you have this confidence and this knowing and your pineal gland is turned on when it needs to be turned on because it can't be turned on all the time because it gets a bit intense because i did that during that course for 12 days and it was like so i will teach you how to turn on your pineal gland because of the work that we've done up until that point so you'll get in touch with your intuition and your deep knowing and finally module 12 ask for forgiveness to free yourself of negativity become lighter and reclaim your original self you know, in the, in the health space and in the spiritual space, there's this whole thing of forgiving. I don't agree with that. I believe that is to ask for forgiveness. When you ask, for, when you realize that you are entirely responsible for your life and that you're not a victim at all, and you take full responsibility and anything that has happened to you, it was just somehow that had to come to you. And the person or the events that brought it to you was just the messenger. And I'm so sorry that you had to be the one to bring this to me. And when you notice that when you hurt others, I'm so sorry. This is done all internally. It's called an ancient technique called Pratikraman. I'm so sorry. You invoke the, the pure soul of that. You don't have to do it even personally. It's an internal practice. I'm so sorry that I hurt you. So a lot of you know, one of the, the, the key things that we were meant to speak about this thing was like the one that sabotages us. What, what is, why is it that we can't move ahead on these things that we, sh we, we know that we should do? And a lot of it is to do, I promise you, a lot of it, in, you know, this thing about um, the secret and manifestation, a lot of it is simply to do with intent, not necessarily visualization, but intent. And the more wholesome the intent is in relation to nonviolence. Give me the energies not to harm another with my words, with my actions, with my speech. Give, my, give me the energies to be with the light in the morning. It's laying down these intents and it's clearing up our act with these forgiveness techniques and it's taking responsibility for our one and precious life that enables this deep fulfillment to come through. And there's no space for being a victim in that place. Well, Brian, it's clear what, a, what an incredible amount of deep reflection and investigation and practice and, and wisdom is, is, is flowing into this program. And I know I can tell from the way you describe each module that there's some really groundbreaking understandings in how we orient ourselves to the, the bringing the health in our system forward and to aligning with the natural rhythms to do so. So I want to share a little bit more about it. So if you choose to move forward, you will get not only the 12 90-minute live sessions with Brian, which are really going to be packed with important insights, recognitions, and practices. You also have time to ask your own questions directly. You'll have recordings for every session, both video and audio, so you can go back and work with some of the content again and again. You'll have word-for-word -word transcripts to work with study and highlight. There'll be weekly exercises for home as well as a Facebook community to support you in deepening your experience in community. 
And on the page, uh, you will see there's a number of extra bonuses. Again, the URL is naturalhygienicscourse.com. So the first bonus that you will receive if you choose to join is uh, Enhance the Health and the Self-Healing Process is a video dialogue with Brian and Bonnie Gintis. You want to share anything about that bonus, Brian? Oh, Bonnie is um, an amazing, amazing person. She, she's a, a, a doctor of osteopathy that is totally in line with the, you know, the, the principles of classical osteopathy. And, and so that, that conversation was a wonderful, and also in, in relation to embodiment as well. So be beautiful conversation. And then there's also a PDF excerpt of uh, Brian's childhood journey into the health and self-healing. It's really fascinating. I've gotten to read that myself. And there's a special bonus for those of you who sign up by midnight tonight Pacific time. Uh, this is our encouragement for you to really go to the page, read through, reflect on what you've he heard here. And if you're choosing to move forward today, then you get a special bonus as well. It's called Natural Laws Through a Spiritual Lens. It's a dialogue with Brian and Dr. Sarah Pugh. And I'd love for you to share a little bit about that dialogue and that special bonus people get when they sign up today. Sarah is amazing. She is a quantum biology biologist expert, and also she is um, she's actually a PhD in biochemistry. But she is super smart, and um, she's also you know really understanding exercise in, in a way that I really appreciate too. So just it was such a delight to have that dialogue with her because I, she really is one of the illuminaries in the field. Well, that's a great extra reason to sign up today. So it's truly really going to be an amazing program. You can just hear Brian's passion, the way in which he's fully embodied these teachings in his own life gives a lot of uh, great insights that you can, in, and also inspiration. I can tell this is, I need this course too, and I'm looking forward to, to uh, reviewing it as well. So this is, uh, so we've kept the investment very accessible for this program, given it's 12 weeks long and the extra bonuses, it's three payments of $219, or you save 10% when you pay in full with one payment of $597. The course is going to begin on May 1st and run Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. But even if you can't make the live times, you can still get the full value with the recordings and the transcripts in the community as well. And I particularly encourage you to go to the page and, and read through some of the testimonials uh, about other courses that Brian has taught. Beautiful journey of self-discovery and deepening awareness, uh, powerfully empowering, allowed me to access the body as a whole. Brian has taught a lot of masterful courses on deeper levels embodiment. And so this takes it to a next level of integrating the natural hygienics health principles so you can really have an integrated approach to optimizing your health and well-being and ultimately your your fulfillment on this planet. So you can find all the details at naturalhygienicscourse.com, naturalhygienicscourse.com. And if you sign up by midnight tonight, you'll get that special bonus that we just described on natural laws through a spiritual lens. So Brian, what a great hour it's been with you. Super inspiring. And uh, anything that's still on your heart you want to share with folks who are considering going further into this program with you? Just that it would be a pleasure to be be your guide and share with you this information so that you can really make that choice for optimal health and, and aging well and healthily. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Brian, and thank you all for joining. And I know I've been rewired in some of my deeper understandings of how to uh, align and call forth the health within and align with natural rhythms and relate to the sun. And there's so many different things that we've uh, discussed today. So thank you, Brian, for that wisdom. And thank you for this upcoming program. So if you are called to go further with Brian's uh, approach to natural hygienics, then you can do so at naturalhygienicscourse.com. Thank, thank you, you Stephen.